Hello and a warm welcome to Captains of Industry. I'm Erika van der This week's guest is Samuel Ogbu, CEO of Liberty Properties. Welcome, Samuel. Really good to have you here. Thank if you, you could start by just here. explaining what Liberty Property is, I understand it's the property cluster of the Liberty Group. So a great deal of functions within that. Yes, indeed. Uh, Liberty Properties does um, three things. We are traditionally been known as developers, property developers, responsible for developing such assets as Santon City, Eastgate and so forth. We're also property managers, so we're involved in property management. We have a long-standing property management business. And we are property asset managers, uh, attracting and deploying capital primary primarily for the Liberty Group and Liberty Policy holders, but increasingly we are active in attracting third party capital to funds that we, vehicles that we are creating. Um, the asset management unit is housed in our asset manager, our group asset manager Stanlib, and it's um, the Stanlib uh, direct property investment um, franchise. And the two other businesses remain within the broader Liberty um, Group. Um, as property development and property mm. property management. You've been at Liberty Properties since mm. 2008. Now the broader economy uh, has been in, in difficult circumstances since then. Nevertheless, property seems to have been the place to be since 2008. If you look at where the corporate action has been in South Africa, the new listings, I think to a large extent it's been a structural issue with uh, this, this market really expanding, debt in issuances more recently, and it's been an asset class that has outperformed. I think um, property has done very well um, over the last, if you look back over the last 15 years um, and you look at the IPD statistics, South Africa has performed consistently well. Um, we've enjoyed good um, income returns, there's been a degree of um, cap rate compression which has helped the valuations and helped the capital returns. It's fair to say that the last, um, certainly the last three years have been particularly difficult. We had a very good run from 2004 to about 2007 and things got a little bit sticky um, as with everybody else in 2008 or so forth because we do reflect the, 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 the health of the economy. I mean, the, we, we, we do follow that. I mean, we, at the end of the day, businesses can only afford to pay so much rent if their profits, if their income is, is not so much down. And so, so yes, it's, it's, it's performed well because the fundamentals have been good. Um, it's fair to say that different sectors have had different experiences. I don't think it's been uh, universally, um, it, it, it's been the same experience. Um, I think the office sector has uh, had some challenges, um, high level of vacancies, uh, which have been absorbed now um, because there was a slowdown in, in the, in the, in the buildup of offices. Um, the hospitality has certainly seen um, some significant headwinds. Um, you said that you've got a number of hotels, some of the hot uh, um, Holiday Inn hotels within y your grouping. Well, the Garden Court and uh, and um, and and uh, Southern Sun hotels. We were actually the largest owner of hotel rooms in the in the country, uh, but we're not hotel operators. We we we're privileged to have the uh, one of the leading hotel operators in, on the continent as our partner, uh, who manage all our hotels. Uh, we have a range of thirteen hotels around the country. If you had to make take the next step, so you've described a situation that's initially exciting and a great deal of growth, but it has become more challenging. And there have been other challenges. I'd imagine a whole number of foreign entrants coming to South Africa, seeing it as a stepping stone to the rest of the continent and wanting to expand their presence there. So you've, you, you're elbowing, elbowing uh, some of your competitors, hopefully, out of the way. And then there are issues such as costs. If you see listed property companies looking at their results, rising property management costs being at top of the, the, the issues. I think cost has been the biggest headache. Um, occupancy costs have been rising for tenants. Um, costs of costs of development and costs of construction have been reasonably well managed because the economy has been contracting or rather staying still. So constru contractor would be able to negotiate um, good um, good rates for construction. But municipal rates, uh, electricity, um, water, all those costs have risen. Uh, we've seen upward push on on wages at, at all levels. Our core business is retail. And there we have experienced substantial um, challenges in, in managing costs and being able to recover them from escalations in, in rentals, um, which you can only really, you can only do when the rentals come up for renewal or uh, and, and so forth. So. And we've also seen that our tenants, uh, particularly the smaller ones, have experienced significant challenges with uh, rates, uh, with electricity, with all sorts of uh, other costs, the input costs, that they cannot always recover 
um, in the price. So it, it, it's been a difficult, er, difficult mm -hmm. time. Um, I think we've been somewhat insulated because of the nature of the centers we run and the nature of our, our, our customer base and um, because they because are larger. Because it's quality? It's quality and it's also larger, so we're able to spread uh, a little bit more, we're able to absorb a, a, a little bit more, but we're not immune from those pressures and we've, we've also had to manage more intelligently, manage more innovatively and uh, find ways to reduce those yes. costs. And th this is what we're hearing from leaders, uh, mm -hmm. innovation, very close cost management and control and possibly thinking about your asset base. Will you be doing anything particularly differently over the coming five years? I think we will. I think um, we've done quite a few things differently. We have um, restructured our business um, to be more focused on the, diff on the three different pillars and to understand the cost structures a little bit better, understand it and, and, and adapt our business models to suit um, a change in environment. And I think our competitors, the good, the good ones, are, are doing likewise. I think we're looking at um, how we do things, how we organize, making sure we eliminate duplication, making sure that we, we use informa information technology uh, intelligently, making sure we train our people well so that we don't, uh, that, that, that you know, we, 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 we eliminate waste from, mm. uh, from, the, from the processes. And being alert to opportunities. We're focusing a lot more on, on, on going out and winning business rather than yes. depending on, rel relying on, on traditional um, customers or traditional ways of getting business. How important is the African hinterland to you? We know the broader Liberty Group has said it's important mm -hmm. uh, as part of their expansion and in their future strategy. So you, you, um, you ride off that, but you also say you raise third party funds. So I know you, you manage properties in Zambia. Where else are you looking or are you present? Well, I wouldn't really consider Anto Africa to be a hinterland, <laughs> but uh, uh, for us, it's is a, that a it's colonialist <laughs> statement? <laughs> <laughs> for us, it's a, it's a, well, it, 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 it's it's a, it's it provides presents us with a great opportunity. Um, our business is focused on three areas. Firstly, make sure we look after our core. Uh, our core clients, which are the Liberty Property, uh, the, well, the Liberty Policy Holders, that, that that fund most of the assets we own. Secondly, take advantage of the Africa Growth Story, and it is a great story. Yeah, it's something we've been pursuing certainly since I've been in Liberty, and we're accelerating our pursuit of that. Uh, and thirdly, there are opportunities within South Africa. I would not write off South Africa yet. Yes, we have some significant challenges, but there is a, there are vast opportunities still. Uh, in this country, and um, there are places where we are not present that opportunity mm -hmm. remains, and uh, we're looking beyond our traditional metropolitan uh, heartland, if yes. you like, um, to newly e emerging economic nodes, um, where despite the challenges we see it, you know, right now with, 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 with the industrial strife and what have you, we do believe that there are, there are rich seams of opportunity to be yet mm. to be mined. So where are those nodes in Africa? You are of Nigerian origin. Is it important for you to, to use the networks that you might have there and exploit those? Well, it's helpful. Uh, I would like to think it's helpful. Um, but I've actually been working across the continent for the last uh, 14 years, even before I, I joined uh, uh, Liberty. So I have good connections in East Africa, where it, which is an important node um, for us. Um, the Liberty Group is present in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. In fact, we're present in 14 African countries at, 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 at the moment. Um, we've built a good base in Southern Africa. And now on the next level of growth for us, the next push is West Africa. And of course, when you think of West Africa, you do indeed think of Nigeria. But one should not forget Ghana, uh, and should not forget when whilst we're not actively pursuing the Francophone countries at the moment, but one, one, should, one should recall that West Africa is, uh, uh, has many more, more countries in it mm -hmm. than just Nigeria. But Nigeria most definitely is a significant opportunity, and uh, we are active there, and we will become even more so in the, coming, in the coming months and years. So we know the flavors are different in each node, in each region, but uh, could one make an overriding statement of what the challenges might be in Africa? One, we speak regularly to the CEO of ShopRite, Waiti Basun, who always bemoans the fact that there are so few people willing to come alongside him uh, to have those property developments in place for, for them to establish their shops. Well, I'm hoping Whitey will remember my number and give me a call <laughs> because I'm certainly going to be there <laughs> and I have been there. No, no, seriously, I admire what um, ShopRite have done and, and there are others. Um, there, there are others who've done a, a lot of good work there. The challenges actually are pretty much the same challenges as you'd meet anywhere. They're just a diff of a different flavor um, and you, you have to do your homework. Um, you have to understand the market you're going to. You have to be very clear about your strategy, about what you want to achieve. 
And I think with Africa, probably more so than anywhere else, you have to be prepared to play the long game. I think the idea that somehow there is there are easy pickings yeah. uh, is mistaken. I think there are there are a lot of school fees to be paid. Hopefully, you can leverage off school uh, lessons learned by others and lessons learned by other parts of the group. Um, but with as with any venture business venture, you have to do your homework. You have to know your market. You have to know your strengths. And you have to know and you have to find good partners mm. uh, and, and be prepared to put in a lot of work um, and and uh, and, um, and and you know deliver what the customer wants. I want to conclude by asking you about South Africa. A few minutes ago, you did refer to some of the troubles we're having here. And many have attributed this to lack of leadership, whether it's at the, the government level or within business or within society more broadly. What's your view on that? I think leadership could always be improved, and it's not just for South Africa. I think many would say that the problems that the Eurozone is having at the moment displays a lack of political will and leadership. We certainly do have challenges. Um, our biggest challenges are preparing um, something for the next generation training, um, resolving the education issue, resolving the disparities that we see. And all of that does take leadership, as do all the other challenges we make. So certainly leadership is part of it, but leadership does not exist in a vacuum. There are other resources that need to be put in place, uh, and, and I think there are other things that need to be done. And I think also leadership is not to preserve the political elite. I think business also has to stand up and display leadership, display uh, focus, display innovation, and display daring. Um, so I think we all have a part to play in this, uh, and I wouldn't be too quick to write South Africa off yet. So you're still comfortable doing business here in South Africa, uh, and I also just want to ask you about the role of business and standing up and showing some daring. Could some of that be in standing up and speaking out against what business sees as, as being not right? Uh, it does. I do fe get the feeling that South African business is fairly timid, fairly nervous of, of being critical. I'm not sure it's timid. I think there are times when I think people would, would want um, business to speak up. And I think there are examples where business people have spoken up. Uh, one thinks of uh, Dr. Rukosa speak, speaking up and perhaps n haven't got the level of support um, and defense that, that they needed. Whether or not you agree with his views is not the point. I think he has a right to, to comment and say, this thing doesn't look right to us and we believe that we need to go a different way. Others have been stepping into the breach, um, and, and, and I think that is good. In terms of what business needs to do, I think we have a lot to contribute to, not just the growth of the economy, but also the, the development of people generally. We have a lot to say about how things can be run um, and, and things can be made better, and I think we, we certainly ought to be doing that. Well, we headed into a short commercial break, more with Liberty Properties' Samuel Ogbu when we return.